Hi everyone. I'm just gonna wait here for people to uh, kind of join in and see what's happening here as well. Oh, actually, I don't even know if you can hear me because I didn't put my earphones in. Hi. I'm just waiting for a couple minutes. Anyone wants to say hi, say hi. Tell me you're here, that you can hear me okay and see me okay. Oh, hi, Hope. And um, I'm just waiting to let people to come in before I, I kind of start this. Hi. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm actually messaging at the same time. It's so weird to me. I just want to make sure, again, everyone can hear me just because I'm, it's a laptop and I'm not, I'm not used to using it for my MacBook. I'm so used to using my phone as I drop it here. Um, hey, Richard. Hi, everyone. Coming in. Um, just messaging someone back here, too, as well. How's everyone doing? Cool, cool. It's there's like a noise over here and it's like freaking me out for some reason. Anyway, um cool. So people are coming in now. Let's just talk about this. Um People asked me, or Natalie reached out to me um, yesterday and asked me about this again, the, the difference of soul reading and, and psychic intuitive. The last time I did a, a live video about the fear and doubt and mediumship, I brought up, I brought up um, soul readings compared to psychic readings. So I wanted to, I guess people had a lot of questions around that. Um, I saw a lot of comments in the, in the chat um, after going through the video and stuff like that. So um, I, I kind of just wanted to go over what does it mean uh, what was I talking about? Um, some people, uh, cause I did see some people say, Oh, well, I take that as a psychic or an intuitive reading. What I, I think of when I was talking about in the video, I didn't go into depth about it. Um, but to me, a soul reading, um, comes from a deeper level. I think there's just different, um, different layers of energy, if you want to call it that, um, you know, within our own psyche, within our own spirit, uh, clearly a soul I feel, you know, is potentially the deepest. Um, you, you, I guess if you're a hypnotherapist or, hypnosis person you probably could say it's something like the the uh, um subconscious mind you know the soul is a part of that whole aspect that that makeup of the subconscious mind so the subconscious mind is actually where god lies you know where, where the spark of the divine lies within us um all there too as well so um it was really interesting because after i brought it up um and some people had questions. I actually started to work on it with, uh, um, at the time, the mentorship group I was um, bringing through. I had a couple of mentees at that point, um, and we were working. And so I had a couple of them practicing. And then um, I, I had Natalie practicing them. And I had Natalie actually do one on me so I, she could see the difference between where I'm talking about the psychic intuitive layer compared to the, the, the soul layer. It's weird. Everything is reversed because I'm, I guess my screen. Uh, um, so the psychic intuitive layer, and then you have the deeper, the, the soul um, layer uh, of the energy too. And so it was really interesting because I had her do this and literally she was able to have this kind of breakthrough at that moment as she kept reading for me and I had her go deeper and deeper to bring up a lot of stuff that's deep within me, meaning again, my soul. Um, I think the soul covers kind of our belief structure, uh, um, what we hold on to, uh, 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 potential things that have, we've held on to in the past. Again, if you, if you know anything about hypnotherapy, um, I'm going to say it's the same thing almost, you know, a hypnotherapist would understand what I'm talking about right now because people go seek out hypnotherapists to be taken back to those points, um, in life where their belief structures were, 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 were taken off or they had some trauma, some experiences, uh, a rejection, uh, um, uh, uh, abuse in some way, whether it's emotional trauma, uh, sexual, uh, um, physical abuse um and that stayed in the psyche you know that 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 stays in the person's spirit and the person's soul and then a pattern um kind of evolves around that you know for in the sitter's life a pattern then evolves around this old wound or trauma um that happened again you, you kind of need to you know do some research if uh, um as a reader like i say to anyone you know if you want to be really good at what you do 
um, you, you become a wealth of knowledge. You become a sponge. You become, you read books. You don't just read books. You want to be a great medium. You want to be an awesome medium. You don't just read books about the dead. You read books about psychology. You read books about the psyche. You read books about grief and loss. You know what I mean? Um, to know what your sitter's going through um, at that point. So again, uh, you know, if you, if it's a uh, basic psychology, put it that way, uh, um, that if, you know, when the person goes through trauma there in some way, uh, eventually that pattern, that trauma then becomes a pattern within the sitter or the person. And then things kind of evolve around that for their whole life, um, there as well. And so literally, uh, um, in a soul reading, my belief is, and again, I say it to everyone. Oh, hi, Natalie. You're here. I was just bringing you up. I don't know if you heard it. Uh, um, to everyone, uh, um, everyone's saying hello. I'm saying hello back now. But the, literally that pattern stays stuck in that person. And then they go through life and they, if you want to say attract, uh, um, they literally um, have that deep-seated hurt, that resentment, that abuse, something that is lodged now within them, and therefore they create life or they attract certain circumstances based upon that pattern. If you go and look at Jung, I, didn't, I don't even know where this is going, so it's so interesting to me because I had no idea I was going to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, I always feel like I just ask spirit to direct the conversation and, and what's needed to be said out of it. Um, but if you go back and look at Carl Jung, um, who Jung was Freud's uh, understudy and then became, you know, uh, clearly a big uh, psychologist, um, psych psychiatrist, really, uh, but uh, studied the mind, put it that way. But if you go back and look, there's a very famous quote. I don't know exactly what it says, but it's something to the point of um, until you make the unconscious conscious, you will call it fate and it will direct your life. So I'm pretty sure it's that's the, the, that's the actual quote. Uh, um, but Someone check it for me. Um, but what he's saying here again is that that's what I'm talking about, the pattern. There's an unconscious pattern that the, the recipient has no idea, has no idea from a trauma um, in their childhood, from the trauma in, 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 you know, growing up in their teens and their 19s, 20s, whatever. It could be 30s, 40s, you know what I mean? But they've had some sort of rejection, hurt, abuse, something of that nature. And I believe it's in the soul. It's in the deeper level of that is where that sits. And I feel like as a good reader, as a good medium, uh, um, I feel that we need to, you need to know all energy, really. You know, you need to know all about the energy. You need to all know layers of energy. You need to know about someone's psyche. You need to study the psyche. You need to study some basic psychology. Uh, um, we all want to be great mediums and just speak to the dead, but sometimes it's not always about that. I just did a reading this morning. Uh, um, literally, uh, the person came to me and it was a straight, uh, uh, I would say, soul reading. It was a soul reading and um, psychic, a little, it was a little bit of both, psychic and soul reading. And through the soul reading, it came up around this this um, deep seated hurt uh, that 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 this person was who was a female that was rejected um, when she was younger, uh, high school or a little bit before high school years. And from that, then she then you know is in a, a, a marriage that potentially uh, is about to be a divorce, and because this person makes her not feel good enough, because she has a pattern set by that. Again, what am I trying to say? That information, I believe, is deep down. It's, it's deeper than a psychic intuitive. A psychic or an intuitive, I'm using both words because people don't like the psychic anymore because they think of, uh, 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 you know, psychic, we, we've given the, the term psychic a dirty, it's a dirty word now. It's a dirty word. And for some reason, we've made it a dirty word in the industry. And we think of the traditional scarf uh, with the crystal ball um, lady there when we think that. But um, so psychic or intuitive is one of the same. Cause I did see someone ask that recently in, in the group or in, in the group, what's the difference between psychic and intuitive? There's nothing. It's the same. Um, we're just using interchanging words, um, there, but the psychic intuitive reading to me is a predictive reading. It's more of a predictive, uh, uh reading. So again, we talk about jobs, uh, uh careers, uh, 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 relationship or family, or they want to know about finances, or are they going to find romance? Uh, um, so I find it interesting where that's more of a predictive kind of a way the psychic intuitive 
uh, um, information compared to the soul. And again, I feel the soul just goes on a deeper level. And sometimes, there it is. Natalie just put, put up the quote, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Exactly. That's Jung's quote um, there. And that's what I'm talking about. I believe it gets enlarged into the soul, the subconscious mind, where we can debate it all you want. No one's ever found the soul. No one's ever found the subconscious mind. Um, but I, for me, I feel it's one of the same. Uh, one of the same there um, too as well. So uh, again, people that are, are new to this group and they're thinking, uh, uh, well, why are we talking about this? And this is a mediumship development group again, because I feel like as what I've noticed here is, as, as much as long as this past year, um, I've been mentoring a lot of intermediate mediums. And it's funny because a lot of people never did an intuitive or psychic reading or never done a soul reading. And I feel it's, it, I feel it goes hand in hand. You know, I don't think that you need to great, be a great psychic to be a great medium, but it's the same. It, 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 you need to know energy. You know, I remember it was funny too. Cause I was, um, I, I, after all this stuff kind of came in, like my, 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 my thoughts were flooded here of, of things that had happened. And James Van Prague uh, was one time he was here in New Jersey years ago, years ago. And me and my wife went to see him. And um, he did a soul reading. So he did. He was shown these various ways to do a soul reading. And, of course, you know, he asked someone to raise her hand. My wife raised her hand. She got picked. Um, he made her come out into the, the, the aisle, and he sat there. And I, it was brilliant, really. It was phenomenal. I mean, he went all the way back, literally, to, uh, to the womb and, and literally brought up everything that happened from womb to where she is now. Um, I don't mean literally everything. It would be all night, but I'm saying the basis of it, uh, um, her spiritual destiny. Uh, um, I mean, he picked up everything about her being a social worker. You know, she works for, uh, um, you know, a child protection agency here in New Jersey, just everything um, that he, he brought up about the, the parents that she chose um, from the spirit side before coming here for the lessons that she needed to learn in this life. Uh, type thing. So it was really interesting. So that was a soul reading. You know, there was nothing predictive about it. There was nothing uh, 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 about, um, you know, having another child, nothing about her job, uh, a futuristic type thing. He brought up her job and what she did, what she was meant to do, what was her uh, uh, like I said, spiritual destiny there in some way. So there was things coming up around that, uh, um, but there was nothing about predictive about it. So that, that's why I, I, I want to be real clear on the difference between the soul reading um, and a psychic or an intuitive reading. And it's, again, it's just a difference of, I think, layers of energy, you know? Uh, um, going back to Natalie, when I had Natalie work on me and do this with me when, when, when I was working with her, um, she, I made her go, you know, and do a soul. And so sometimes, you know, people will then ask me, well, how do you do it? Sometimes it's just an easy intention of connecting to the deeper level, you know, connecting to the deeper level of that person, the, you know, use your uh, uh, empathic senses um, to kind of connect into the soul there and um, start to feel because sometimes it's a subtle it's a subtle feeling of what you start to feel like within um, whether you're angry or you know there's a lot of hurts or there you know sometimes for me I know I'm brought back I'm usually brought back to a specific time frame or maybe I uh, uh, clairvoyantly see or sometimes I clairsentiently feel that I'm younger. I feel I'm around 10 to 12 years old um, and, and uh, usually that's something that starts to happen there where there is some sort of trauma um, that has happened there. Now, for me, this is me, my experience, and all I can give you is for me and my experience. And again, like I said to everyone watching, I don't have the ultimate truth. No one has the ultimate truth. No one's died and come back. Uh, um, so again, no one has the ultimate truth. So I can only give you my experience about it because I'm sure there'll be people that, that will want to argue in some way because it's, it's been coming up a lot lately. And it's kind of crazy to me. Uh, um, but for me, uh, um, a soul reading, I feel like, is absolutely more um, healing. It's a healing. It's literally a healing. So as a reader, you know, we know that we're healers, right? Uh, um, some people might be body healers. Some might be Reiki healers, you know, what I mean? and they, they're, they're intuitives and mediums, and that's fine. For me, I'm, I, I, I study everything on my mediumship, psychicness intuitiveness. Uh, um, I don't really go into that world of, of, of healing. Um, so, but I know that the soul reading is a healing because I'll tell you when you can bring up because it's unconscious to the person, 
You know, if you looked at, uh, there's programs like, uh, oh God, I can't remember that, uh, um, Landmark Forum. Some people might have heard of that, but kind of these self-development types of forums. But they talk about what we don't know, we don't know. What you don't know, you don't know. What is unconscious, you have no idea. So almost like the, I think this is young too. You, you can't solve a problem, or it might be Einstein. You can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it, you know? Um, so again, as a reader, as a soul reader, you're able to help kind of go in, pull that information out, have it come up through you, give it back there to your sitter, and you could see some miraculous healing starting to take place because you're helping the sitter uncover the unconscious part of them, and they wonder why their life is the way that it is right now, why their life is shit, why they say, you know, they, 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 they do this work or they visualize all this stuff, you know, and abundance and everything else, but yet they're still in a lack of consciousness, you know? You're literally soul conscious, again, soul consciousness, spirit, it's all the same. Um, so literally, they're, 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 they may be visualizing, they, they may be uh, affirming, they may be doing all this stuff, but yet they're still stuck or they're still not moving in the way that they want to in their life. And yet, it's usually because, again, that pattern that's unconscious that you're helping bring out to be conscious to them. And so when they do that, um, when you could go in and do that and grab that information and give it back to them, that's really where the healing takes place. You might not see it. It might not be right then and there, you know, boom. Oh my God. Thank you. You broke me through. Some people actually will resist it. You know, uh, they will literally resist what you're saying. They may want to argue sometimes too, but eventually I've been in situations where they've done that. You know, they want to argue it. No, I'm not like that. No way. You know? Um, and then a week later, all of a sudden, you get a, you get an email, you know, Oh my God, I had a breakthrough. I had a good cry. I, I realize now, and I feel like things are starting to move or things are starting to shift there. Um, and so some way, so again, going back to me, that's the soul. That's the deeper level. Someone said to me, uh, um, someone not said to me, but someone commented or commented back in the last video when I started to bring up the soul, soul video. If no one's seen the last video I'm talking about, it's somewhere in this group. It's also on my YouTube page, but it was fear and doubt in your mediumship. So I think if you, if you Google or uh, go to YouTube and if you can't find it in this group, go fear and doubt uh, um, in your mediumship and put in my name, you'll, it will come up there and you can go back and watch it. Uh, but we started to just touch base on uh, soul readings um, and, and, and intuitive readings. And someone had said, well, I just thought that, you know, that that's, you know, to me, that's what's in the aura, you know? Um, I don't really think that. I don't think that that's in the aura. I think uh, um, it's on a, again, the soul is, it's, it's a deeper perspective. It's a deeper, it's in the subconscious mind, put it that way. Uh, um, I think the aura is more psychic intuitive energy um, there that that's being, that, that that's around you, that's lodged into you, that, that, that a good psychic can go in and pull this, this stuff through that. Uh, again, I think a good psychic can still go on the soul. I don't, there's no such thing as a soul reader, uh, um, but um, I'm sure there are people that just do soul readings out there. I'm just saying in general, uh, it's good to know all of your basis because you will get people like that. Now, how does that play into your mediumship? Well, listen, if you can connect with the living soul, guess what? It's the same as the discarnate. It's literally the same. You're, you're talking to a soul there on the spirit side. Literally. Uh, um, so it's the same thing. So as soon as I kind of tune in, tap into someone here, I set my intention. I feel, ooh, um, ooh I want to go deeper to the soul. So the soul, boom, information starts coming. I just start talking and I talk and I'm just picking up everything I'm feeling around this person. That's the same thing I do with mediumship because I'm dealing with the soul and the spirit side. It's the exact same thing. So uh, um, again, working on soul, working on that soul level, working on, uh, uh, um, Taking a friend and saying, "Hey, can I, can I, can I try and work on you for ten minutes here, and let me work on a soul reading with you?" That's the same exact thing. You're blending your energy into that deeper part of them, and allowing that energy to be pulled back to you, and it's going to come up through your clairvoyant senses, just as when the spirit friend here, the discarnate, comes close here, they're going to merge their soul to our soul, and that information is going to come up through my clairvoyant senses. Uh, so again, it's pretty much the same thing. That's why, to me, it's also important that you practice soul readings. Um, now, I find this, this is what I also found interesting, too, because I had, uh, um, 
when when I did um uh, you know I, Tony Stockwell, I mentored with Tony Stockwell for about two and a half years now, uh, um and actually it's coming up on three years. So uh, I did a year with him in England, and so in my year mentorship in England with him, there was a weekend we were there, and literally all we did was we did we we worked on soul, which was kind of interesting because that's what he felt you know kind of guided to do, and so instead of doing mediumship at all that weekend, we literally had a weekend of just soul bonding soul blending soul readings soul uh, uh, um you know uh, practice different exercises with getting information from each other's souls uh, um there giving each other a uh, uh, presence uh, uh literally asking the other person's soul to give me a, a something and place something in my hand or give me an object that i could give back here to the other to the sitter um that the, their own soul gave me that can help them for their path there's exercises that you can do there. And so it was actually, <coughs> excuse me, it was actually probably one of the best weekends we had there. I mean, we left there, there was 18 of us in, in the mentorship in England. We left there and it was just like this camaraderie, emotional uh, weekend. Uh, it was, we were probably, I don't know, four months into the mentorship at that point, uh, um, four or five months in the mentorship. It just helped us bond so much better. It helped us, uh, 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 helped our work. It, it, it just, it, it brought us all closer together too. But we left that weekend on this amazing high though, amazing high. And when I think back now, it's probably because we were constantly just blending to the, to the higher part of our being, right? The soul is the aspect, is the spark of God, is the light that, that is within us. So again, um, we probably left there just fucking high as hell on light. You know what I mean? Like I really felt like I was high. And, uh, um, and so uh, uh, I find it interesting. But the reason why I'm bringing it up again is because uh, we did an assignment around it. And so after I brought up this, this thing in my last video last month, or it might be a month and a half now, uh, um, that, I, that I talked about this, I was sitting at my computer like a day or two after and uh, my old laptop. And uh, for some reason, I was ha looking for something in a docu you know, in my documents. And boom, there it is, soul readings. And I said, oh, what the hell is this? So I clicked on it, and it was my homework. Literally, we had to do a homework. Uh, um, I feel like I just explained it really well, though, actually, um, using spirit here, but I'm just going to read what I wrote. Uh, I don't remember the questions, unfortunately, but I, we did have written homework to do in that mentorship, um, too, as well. And um, any of my new, I have to start a new mentorship tomorrow. Uh, so if any of you guys are watching right now, be prepared to do uh, um, homework throughout these months. Uh, but again, uh, um, what I had wrote here, I don't remember the question, but it was something around uh, about the soul readings, about what we thought of them, about uh, uh, what we would like in them. What do we, where do we think it comes from? That kind of a thing. And so I had wrote, I feel that a soul reading is a deeper connection than a psychic reading. It touches me in a deeper space. I also think it's a deeper and empathetic, uh, empathic connection for me, really sensing the feelings of the sitter on a deeper level, sometimes even deeper than the con than their conscious mind. You can get down to the core of someone and their feelings that they are masking and hiding. Ultimately, this is done so they can, they can have validation of what they've been feeling so they know what needs to be released or what they need to let go of or what they are running from because a lot of people run. There's resistance. We have this shadow. Uh, uh, people don't want to hear about it. You know, people don't even, most people don't even realize it's there. That's what I'm saying. You know, again, to be, you know, to, to learn in your journey, learn everything you can um, about the psyche. We're talking about the psyche here. You know, read, do some research on psychology and stuff like that. But uh, so people are running because they're running from their shadow. They're running from their resistance, you know, um, but, or they're, or they're unconscious. You can call it the unconscious. You can call it the shadow, whatever you want to call it. They're interchangeable names here um, too as well. But the benefit of this, I write here, the benefit of this is for them to start a healing for themselves. The medium doesn't do shit. We are not some great healer, you know? We just listen. We listen. We surrender. We are to be a voice here of, for spirit, for the soul. So maybe we have guides that come close and could help us get into that person's soul. Maybe a guide um, can give us some information to help this client out here too as well. But the medium, we don't do anything. We're just the medium. We are that, that 
medium. I mean, well, there's no other better way. We, we are the middle person there. You know what I mean? Um, and that it's going to come through us what that needs to be heard. Um, and so, you know, one of the things when I, when I first started, but before mediumship really took off for me, I actually started doing psychic readings. Um, and that's how my name started going around. And then dead people started showing up in my psychic readings. So I thought that was really weird. Uh, but one of the things I, I would always do is when I would ask, my intention was when I would sit down with a client, when they were sitting across from me, I actually used to do psychometry, not even knowing it was psychometry at the time. I would ask them for something that they were wearing. I would hold on to it and just to feel their energy and get into this connection of their energy. And then I would you know, give it back to them and then I would you know, go in deeper. But one of the questions I would actually ask was, how does this person heal? I literally, what can you give me? How did this, how can I help this person heal to some way, you know? Um, and then throughout that hour reading, that shit would start to pop up, you know what I mean? Of what they're holding on to the deeper emotions and all this other stuff. Uh, um, and again, uh, just because we unmask it sometimes, you know, if, if uh, just like the spirit world and mediumship is going to use only your frame of references, if you know how to deal, uh, um, if you've been a coach or uh, I had a um, the, uh, student, uh, I don't even like to call people students, Jonathan, uh, um, which hopefully if he's watching, if not, then I'm sure he will at some point. But Jonathan's just, a, he's a brilliant, he's just, he's just really awesome, this kid. And he's a life coach. And he's also, you know, a medium and uh, he gets really some crazy, crazy evidence um, mediumship wise. And he's a great intuitive. Um, and he, he goes into that soul level without even knowing that he was going into that soul level. And we've talked about it. But because he's a coach and because he studied coaching, he knows how to help people. And so that comes up in his readings. Literally, the spirit world will pull on what this person needs to do or what they should do around to help them heal. So besides un covering uh, or unmasking the unconscious of what they're holding on to on that deeper level, literally he could then give them the tools. He's not giving them. His guides are literally plucking his references. He, that person should do affirmations. This person needs to get some healing work. This person needs to do this. This person needs to do that, you know? So, um, and it was interesting too, because I had, uh, I, to be honest with you, I really didn't think I was going to be a medium. Uh, um, I, and I didn't think I was going to follow this path. Uh, um, I, I thought it was cool and all that, but I really didn't think that this was where I was going. So I signed up for a life coaching school because I wanted to help people. And I really thought that I would be a life coach. And God said no. And um, weird things happened during the school, but I was in a class for a year. I wound up dropping out of it because God said, you have, I have other plans for you. Um, and, and weird synchronistic ways, things that's how it started happening. Even though I knew I was already developing as a medium, I kind of, I tried to run from my, from my path and God said no. And, uh, and, and so, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is I've learned about coaching. So I learned about certain tools, EFT, tapping, uh, uh, affirmation, self-hypnosis, uh, um, healing, meditation, all that stuff, uh, regular hypnosis, not just self-hypnosis. Uh, so I was able to, to, to ha I have my own frame of references also too, as well in the coaching kind of a world to help that the spirit can spirit world our guides can pull out to help give someone of what I feel they can do to help change their life there, there in some way. Now, going back to what I was saying here on my sheet of homework, uh, um, what I'm saying is there is, is, again, learn all modalities of healing. I'm not saying go and do all modalities of healing. I'm saying just have them in your frame of reference because uh, uh, I think someone was telling me, or we were having a conversation something that Mavis said, uh, be a master of one, not a master of all. You can't, if you're just trying to do everything, you're never going to master one thing. Master one thing first, then move on to the next, then move on to the next. And again, when I'm talking about master, mastery they say is 10,000 hours. You know, 10,000 hours. So again, master one thing, but that I'm not saying go and learn every modality. I'm saying have a, 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 a tool belt that you know the frames of references. So when you do a soul reading, you can actually help your sitter, not just uncover it, but what you feel guided to give them so they can help to release, they can help to transform, they can help to release um, their thing there in some way too as well. So I said here again, the benefit of this is for them to start a healing for themselves, to ultimately live a better life, 
because that's really what spirit wants, right? They want us to live a better life. Um, our soul has come here to live a better life. Uh, um, it didn't come here to be miserable. Uh, um, live a better life or a happier life instead of holding on to the stuck emotions that are inside. And we all know, I mean, there's a, you know, if you go and research the mind-body connection now. Uh, some people are saying, you know, there's always an, uh, there's an emotional piece to every physical piece. Um, so the, eventually, because you, you're holding on to the emotion for so long, eventually it manifests as a physicality. You know, it becomes a physical ailment. Some people say cancer. If you go, I mean, perfect book, uh, Anita Munjami is dying to be me. You know, again, this is why I always say to, to anyone, anyone I'm work with, I always say, read, read, study, listen, do, go to YouTube. There's free books on there. Just keep going. You know what I mean? Get all the information you could probably get because um, this way, again, you're learning. But in, in Dying to Be Me, Anita Manjami, she says that she's gotten, you know, she feels that she got cancer because she was never really herself. She was dying to be her, but because of her, her parents, her religion, um, and all these uh, crazy things that were placed on her that she felt that she had to follow in life, therefore it manifested as, as this cancer. Um, and then, you know, has her experience, goes to the other side. Oh, she's a famous speaker and, you know, go look her up. Or if you haven't found her book, go find it because um, it's, it's mind-blowing. I've actually read it like two or three times, not only because of that story, her story, but I love her, uh, um, I love her experience of um, when she goes to the other side of what her experience was like, you know, like the actual when she, she dies there and everything happens and she remembers it and writes about it. Um, so again, or a happier life instead of holding on to the suck emotion inside, a final releasement of them and – a final releasement of the stuck emotions and healing can start. Again, you're not going to I don't you're not going to see this final healing in a soul reading. Um you're just uncovering the unconscious for them. Um and then that's when uh once you uncover it, uh potentially maybe you give them tools, maybe you don't. You know, maybe you don't give them tools cuz you don't feel drawn to it and but at least they the seed's been planted and then they go out and they have to eventually when the pain's great enough They'll do something about it, literally. They'll go on and find, well, how do I heal this? They'll go to Google. Well, they'll start to read. Um, maybe they'll find a healer, uh, a different type of a healer that can help them. But, you know, you're just that, that little blip on their journey, on their path to start to heal um, there. So a final releasement uh, of whatever they've been holding on to, and then healing can, can start. Uh, um, you think of that, too, as well. as I, I've talked about this before. I'm going to say this now, though. In mediumship, you know, as a medium – uh, um, when we're dealing with the discarnate, so when we're dealing with the spirit there uh, of a loved one, uh, potentially a mom, dad, brother, sister. I did a group last night in New York, I think of nine, and, and um, at someone's home. And, and um, uh, well, woman's uh, uh, mom and dad were, 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 were full-blown alcoholics. And so mom and dad were coming through. And, and uh, sure enough, uh, mom and dad apologized for being alcoholics and the way that they were raised. There was abuse there because of the alcoholism. Uh, um, to me, that is also, that's doing our job as a medium to be able to uh, um, be the voice of the spirit world, but also give what's needed to be said from that side because they want to apologize for how they treated their daughter and how the family was raised because of all the mistakes they made because of their alcoholism um, there too as well. So uh, that as the medium side of it, um, it's important that we're able to uh, um, do that there too as well. So uh, um, now the other thing was this was in a soul reading, and for some reason, I think Tony must ask us the question, like, what would we cover or what do you think should be covered in a soul reading? And, and um, I, I had wrote back, what are their aspirations? Why are they here? What is their spiritual destiny? I believe in a spiritual destiny. Um, what blocks do they have in their life that are preventing them from moving forward? It doesn't matter. It, that could be uh, around career around relationships, around, uh, uh, you know, marriages, uh, around all these things, you know what I mean? Uh, um, uh, like I said to you before, around, you know, someone's trying to manifest abundance in their life, but they have a lack of consciousness. It's never going to happen. I don't care how much you visualize it. It's never going to happen. If you're st that's the vibration that, that you're vibrating on to a certain degree, you know what I mean? Um, and you're just never going to be able to move forward and have a, a, a uh, uh, um, uh, an abundant uh, life if that's what your your thing is, you know, when you're living in lack. It just can't happen. Um, and what can they do to help heal their soul or spirit? So those are the things that um, would be covered there in a, in a soul um, reading there too as well. So um, again, uh, because of 
you know, some people can say, oh, you know, I, I'm going to bring up the spiritual destiny thing again. I do believe that there's some sort of spiritual destiny that we're, we're, we've come for. But again, we have free will. Um, so it doesn't mean you have to follow it, but I'm pretty sure you'll probably come back in another lifetime and eventually master what you've come for the lesson, you know, um, because my belief, again, we're here for our soul's purpose is, is for the soul's evolution uh, um, and to eventually so we don't have to come back here no more because we've mastered the school of life school of life earth is school that's what we're here our life is school in some way so i do believe that we've set up something with our guides uh, um but we can go off track there's no doubt we can check out soon there's no doubt um there um i don't think we just came here randomly and we just came to create the fucking life that we wanted that's not me it's not my experience either uh, um i didn't expect to do this i didn't expect to be a fucking medium um it's not what i've ever thought of in my life literally and again there's many times i said it again to my wife the other day I'm done. I don't want to do this no more. Uh, um, and it, it happens. It comes up, man. It comes up. And people, some people look at me and say, you must be crazy. I mean, look at, you know, I, I have a lot of shows coming up, uh, um, a lot of demonstrations. Uh, I'm able to do this and support my family. I am a professional medium. This is all I do. And yet that shit still comes up once a month. I say to my wife, I don't want to do this no more. Um, and she just laughs. Okay, we'll go, go back to corporate America. And then, you know, she just makes fun of me in some way. So she keeps me very grounded around it um, there. So again, so I must have signed up for this. This is what I'm saying. I must have signed up for this coming here um, there too as well. So I believe in some sort of spiritual destiny. And I feel like the soul houses that or um, a, a reader could pick up around that uh, there, there as well. Uh, some people say, no, you, you, oh, children, you know, you should be working with children or I see this or see that. Uh, um, you know, I, I feel that's, that's kind of on the deeper level. And like I said, going back to remembering, um, and I had forgotten this, so it's really interesting that Spirit just br brought this up to me just the other day uh, um, when Lauren, my wife, was read by James Van Prague, and he did the soul reading on her in a demonstration. And literally, I mean, you know, her, the, the, her, the, 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 the aspects, the patterns, the ar ar archetypal I don't even know if I'm saying that right. It's the patterns. It's the No, it's not the patterns. It's the ar archetypes. You know what I mean? Um, Carolyn Mice talks about um, all this stuff, but it, those things like her as the caregiver, you know, or of uh, being in service as a social worker, um, that was all housed within her soul, literally. And, and, and that's the things that he brought up and said back to her. And I thought it was, it was brilliant, really. It was absolutely um, brilliant there um, too as well. So that's a soul reading to me it's a deeper level of energy um there and it's it's available to anyone you know it's it's being able to get in there um it's sometimes it's just the the, the intention of it to uh, um help people heal to work with people to uncover the unconscious so they could see the patterns that they've been living on in life um there in some way some people uh, um, you know, some people, uh, you know, I don't know why I keep thinking of QHHT. So that quantum hypnosis healing techniques, it's probably something of the, it's probably rather similar to be honest with you. Um, it's just as the medium, we're able to go in there and, and, and seek that energy out instead of the person going to the higher self, uh, um, and, and trying to get it there, um, getting it there that way. Um, psychic intuitive, I spent a lot of time on the soul because psychic intuitive to me is uh, um, the energy kind of rises. You know, when, you, when you're coming from that deeper level of those beliefs and everything that's been hidden for so long in the, within the person, you almost feel the energy come up and you're almost around the person. This is how it works for me. Around the person. So in the aura instead of into the person, literally, uh, uh, um, in that soul. I feel like for some reason the soul to me uh, um, is around like the solar plexus or that's in that area uh, um, down in here where, 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 where it's seat, the seat of the soul is in some way. So I feel like I'm in there or I'm attached to that person in there. When I come up to the psychic uh, um, intuitive um, level, I feel like I'm around the person. I'm within their aura and I'm, I'm picking up info. And again, that becomes very predictive. Someone's asking me about a change of job. 
Someone's asking me they've been looking for a job. Uh, will they get one in the next six months? Uh, someone's asking me, you know, if, if I leave my husband, uh, uh, will I find a new, I mean, these are grotesque questions, but they come up in psychic readings all the time. I, I live in an area around like the New Jersey housewives and I get these types of questions from these women. Um, so again, the, these are the psychic type of a things uh, um, that, 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 that they come up with. Or again, you know, uh, I'm planning to uh, retire in 10 years. Will I be able to do that? Um, that's to me, it's predictive. That's on the psychic level um, th th there for some reason. So um, that's where I'm trying to say the soul becomes that deeper. And then that psychic kind of comes up um, and it becomes more of a predictive thing. And clearly mediumship is mediumship. Clearly, you know, mediumship to me is, is dealing with the discarnate. Um, but that's not, that doesn't necessarily mean that. I'll be honest with you. I seen someone the other day post something about, um, well, that's not mediumship to me if they're not connecting with spirit. Um, there's a, a very uh, a famous uh, channel, Paul Selig, uh, um, a friend of mine now, and um, brilliant, wrote a couple books, channeled a couple books, brilliant stuff. If you're looking for uh, um, stuff about consciousness, about changing, about shifting your consciousness um, and getting to the deeper core view, uh, um, the, his first book was I Am the Word, and then there's a series around it. But look up Paul Selig. He's brilliant. He's an awesome channel. Uh, um, I don't believe all channels. I'm sorry I don't, but I, uh, um, I've gotten a reading by him. He's found in New York City. He's brilliant, um, and everything he says was just so dead on, and I was blown away. Um, but now we've become friends, but why am I telling you about him? Uh, because he's a medium. That's what I'm telling you. Um, just because he doesn't deal with the dead, he's still a medium. He, he talks to guides like, it, like he's having a conversation. It's crazy. If you go and Google him, you'll see how he, when he talks, he undertones it, says it again, and then brings it back out again because the undertone is his guides talking, and then he says it, and then his mind catches up with what he's saying. Uh, um, so uh, he's a medium. That doesn't mean because he's not dealing with uh, a dead and he's not evidential. <coughs> That doesn't mean he's a medium. Mediumship is, there's many forms of mediumship um, there. It doesn't mean we just have to deal with the dead uh, um, there. But as evidential mediums, what I strive to be, what I'm sure a lot of these people in the group strive to be, um, we, we, you know, we deal with the, the deceased. We deal with, and we want evidence um, so we can understand undeniably that this, uh, the spirit, the soul, the consciousness um, of our loved ones go on there and, and we'll meet up again on the spirit side um, of life there too. So um, hopefully this helps you guys. I think I, I, I covered it. Natalie, I don't know if you're still watching. Um, if you are, just tell me, yes, uh, you feel like, uh, um, because you're the one that actually reached out to me again to ask me to explain the difference. But also, um, guys, if you have any, I said well, I'll do a question and answer here um, too as well. So if anyone has any questions around mediumship, um, around anything I just spoke about, uh, um, just drop them in the comments now, and, and I'll go back and, and um, look at this um, stuff. Uh, the other thing I want to say is too is because you know, listen, for me, I think for most, but I could be wrong. Uh, um, I'm just giving you what I feel, most in the group, most that are watching this, we strive to be um, evidential mediums, you know, uh, um, we strive to be evidential mediums, but um, it doesn't mean that everyone's going to go on to be some brilliant evidential medium. What could happen, you're, you may, you, spirit may move you in a different direction, you know, I, uh, uh, spirit may move you to be a fucking amazing psychic. Spirit may move you to be a, just an amazing soul reader. Spirit may move you to be uh, an amazing uh, QHHT, quantum hypnosis healing technique uh, uh, person, a Reiki master, a hands-on healer. Um, <clears throat> there's all, all these things, you know. Um, I remember, I remember clearly, you know, I've, for some of you that don't know, I've, Lisa Williams trained me two years ago. And, um, and so I remember sitting in class with her and there was like 29 of us um, in this class. And I remember her saying that all, not every one of you will go on to be a medium. And I was like, huh? You know, like, what do you mean? You know, and I was like, oh, God, I hope that's not me. Uh, and uh, but literally, um, and it's true, not everyone, I don't know, out of 29 of us are probably, the, if I could think of, I, I don't know exactly, but I, around 10 of us probably did, you know, but other people went off to do different things. Some went off to be sound healers. Some went off to be hands-on healers. Just what I went through. Just everything I just said. Some of you went on to be psychics and mediums. I'll tell you what. I, it was funny because the other day I was talking to my friend Kim, uh, and uh, we were talking actually about 
uh, I was looking for a good psychic. Literally, I was saying, you know, I've been looking for a good psychic and, I, you know, I'm looking for a reading. I have a question or two here to get answered. And I'm trying to find someone that I've never worked with to get a different, you know, different reading or a different perception or a different perspective um, uh, of it. And uh, we, we had a quick chat. And it's funny because you can find a medium now easier than a psychic, literally. Uh, um, so there's a real need for good fucking psychics in this world. There's a real need for good soul readers in this world. So to me, um, again, as we develop mediumship, I think it's really fucking important to develop soul readings, to develop your psychic intuitive uh, information. It's also going to help you with your mediumship. I keep pointing over here, like they're here. Um, but it's going to help you with the discarnate. It will. It has to. Again, like I said, when you learn soul reading so good that you could just tap into someone like that and you start giving through the information of everything that's happening and people are like, what the fuck? How does this person know this? You know, um, that's the same thing as the spirit side. It's the same thing as the discarnate. Some of you have seen me dem. They know I dem very fast or I, I get my information very fast. It's the same way because if I'm working with an incarnate, so someone here in the living, I'm into their soul and doing a soul reading. I'm just starting to talk and the information is coming through, coming through, coming through. I'm doing the same thing. So the more you practice your soul stuff, it's going to be easier on your mediumship um, there too as well. And, 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 when, and, and when you practice psychic intuitive stuff, it's building references also too as well for mediumship because then eventually that person's going to come along as you're giving a psychic intuitive reading, right? Um, and you're just feeling it out and all of a sudden, ooh, uh there was a, a potentially you're asking me about a relationship, but I know that you must have left the relationship because the person was an alcoholic. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My last relationship, the guy was an alcoholic. That's why I walked away. Oh, good. Thank God. Well, I know there's a new man coming here. I feel it's six months. He had, I see him as brown hair, blue eye. I don't know, whatever. Good, you know, independent, strong man, completely different than this last person that you dated. I want to see other words about him. But uh, then this last person, guess what? Be done with that reading. Now, Guess what? When the spirit world, the, the, you have a father, a husband, a son, whatever. I'm just using a male. Could be a female too. But when they come forward and all of a sudden they're pulling that reference, bing, because you already have that now. Ooh, I have a man that sits here with me. I know he talks to me about being an alcoholic. I know he was very abusive too. He feels like an ex-husband to me. Is that true? Yes. Oh my God. That, yes. Now that reference was all because I read someone psychically at some point and I picked up about their old relationship that the guy was an alcoholic. It's now ingrained within me. And now spirit can come along and bing, pull that out of me and say, oh, I have a gentleman that stands here with me. He talks to me about being alcoholic. He was very abusive to you. He feels like an ex-partner or an ex-husband. Would you understand that? Yes, I do. How the fuck do you know that? Um, because it's in lodged within me already. So that's the importance of also building your psychic and intuitive. Everyone's like jumping. Everyone's trying to, you know, I said this last time. It, it's not, uh, someone posted it the next day and I was like, wait, don't take that out of context. Um, uh, it, it, it's not, it's not a, uh, I said, it's not a race. It's a marathon. You know, everyone wants to be, just deal with the dead. You know what I mean? But like deal with it all because a good, great medium is going to be, well grounded and rooted in all these areas of energy and so if someone asks you so if you're going to practice you don't always have to practice just dealing with the with the deceased practice with the living ask grab a friend can i read you psychically you know people then uh, uh i bring it up i'm a big fan of tarot cards i'm a huge fan of tarot cards i love my here I love my Rider Waite deck. I love them. Someone taught me, a, a woman in here in New Jersey taught me how to read them um, intuitively years ago. I'll still use them. I flip them for myself. I'll, I'll pull a card. Isn't that funny? Look at that card that just pops up. Wheel of Fortune. Something good's coming. I feel it. Uh, uh, um, but the Wheel of Fortune is about destiny. It's about good luck. The Wheel of Motion is in motion. Uh, um, so it's funny. I open that up. But now people, again, people are like blown away when I tell them this. It, it, it always boggles me. John Edward, John Holland. Again, listen to people's stories too. Listen to these other mediums. If you listen to other people in, in you know, you, you listen to the greats. 
You, you go back and listen to the people that aren't even here. You, you talk about Doris Stokes and, 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 and Gordon Higginson and, and some of the other greats, that, you know what I mean? Well, we don't just think about the ones that are alive right now, but you, you listen to their stories. You read books about them. Um, John Edward and John Holland started as a tarot card reader, literally, and that's what they honed in on their intuition, actually to a point where John Edward was uh, um, listening to or reading one of his books. Uh, his uh, woman that helped him, uh, a colleague of his, because he was so young, she said, John, drop your cards. You don't need your cards anymore. Drop your cards. And he would say, no, I need my cards. He'd say, John, drop your cards. You don't need the cards anymore. Uh, um, so again, uh, tarot cards, oracle cards, these will all learn to help hone in on your intuition and your psychicness. Uh, um, well, it's even better, actually. Look what I picked up this time. This is about moving on to an easier place here. Uh, um, it, it's actually interesting. So if we just looked at that collectively, because I almost feel like that's a collective thing. I brought up the Wheel of Fortune, which is about destiny, about new things being in motion, new cycles um, there too. And this is <laughs> this is funny, because um, this is about go. I don't know. It's weird, because my camera's backwards here. Um, this is about actually going off, uh, um, going to an easier place. So maybe collectively here as a group, we're all kind of making a jump here spiritually. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of channels talk about that um, lately, but this is getting into an easier place. This is going to easier times uh, um, there too as um, excuse me, there too as well. So maybe that's a collective message um, for everyone. And that's interesting. Celebration, celebration. So the celebrating um, here too as well. So anyway, um, all that stuff, become well-rounded. Anything that you do is going to help you um, with the world of energy, put it that way. Um, I just wanted to really clarify again the difference of soul uh, compared to a psychic. Uh, um, and, and to me, it's, it's just on a deeper level. Just consider it. That's what I'm asking you. That's what Tony would say to us. Um, just consider it. Uh, consider it uh, uh, that, um, that this comes from a deeper place and you can literally have exercises where you practice this. You could sit across from a friend. You could be on the phone with a friend. You can make all different ways. Uh, maybe we should do a circle. Maybe I'll do a circle sometime. A circle not for the dead, but the, the just deal with soul. Maybe we'll do that. Uh, uh, um, maybe we'll do a circle and we'll do like a, a, an exercise or a group exercise in some way. I can only think I can only do 50 people though. I think on my zoom, uh, um, that we could do some soul exercises cause they're pretty cool. Actually, they are pretty cool. Uh, um, where literally the, the soul will hand you something, um, for the person so you can tell them back for their journey for their path for their destination um there in some way um too as well so um someone just messaged me but hold on let me just go back here on my side of the screen and just why can't i get to you guys uh, um hold on let me just go back why can't i get back here all right i Again, put in your question now if you ask the question. It won't let me go all the way back up to all the comments, I guess, because there's a bunch of them. So I can only see what's coming up. Um, you're making so much sense. I'm glad I stopped and took a listen. Great. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thanks, Allison. That happened to me sometimes. I didn't know that was a coach. Um, I don't know what you mean by that, but I think I understand what you're saying. When, if I went back to talk about, about the coaching thing, uh, um, about helping people in some way or about having these tools in your tool belt that you can give the person uh, um, to be able to help heal their life or to change their life there in some way and to transform them. Uh, always leave someone better than you found them, put it that way, you know, and so learn that kind of stuff. Your energy is inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Uh, um, we must continue to learn ourselves so we have more tools in our toolbox to help in readings as references. Absolutely. Uh, um, I think we need to open our minds so we can build ourselves and provide the tools for others 100%. Um, you, we're never done developing. You know, I, I say it to everyone. I, I still feel we're just scratching the surface with mediumship. That, that's, my, that's my belief. That's what I feel from spirit. Uh, um, I ask them literally probably every day to open me up and make me a better channel. Uh, um, almost like the... What's that prayer? St. Francis prayer? Make me an instrument of thy peace. I ask them also to make me an instrument um, to be a voice, you know, to be a better channel, to be a better voice there of the spirit world um, and would guide me to what I need to learn, what I need to take a look at, what I need to read, what I need to watch. I pretty much eat, breathe, and um, sleep. It, I think my wife thinks I'm crazy probably sometimes because I'm always having earphones on at nighttime when she's trying to go to bed and I'm sitting there trying to watch something uh, um, about something or listen to something. I listen to a lot of books too because I drive a lot. Um, it's a big difference seeing the past lives. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't get into the whole – Summer, I, I know what you're saying. I don't really get into the whole past lives as a medium. Um, they've come up 
only like of all the readings I've ever done, and there's it's got to be over thousands. It's probably only come up like four or three, three or four times uh, past lives. I know there's past life mediums. That's completely fine. That's what your thing is. That's what your thing is. Uh, um, if I were to go, I'm just giving you my experience. If I were to want to go for my past life, I would seek out a hypnotherapist because I would rather be regressed and back because it's me compared to someone telling me and there's no evidence around what that person's telling me. Um, so again, uh, past life mediums are, are great. I'm not saying anything that. I'm saying for myself, I would rather seek out a regressionist um, because it's coming through me instead of someone telling me of what I was, what I did in a life where to me there's no evidence. And that's why for me, mediumship has to be very evidential um, or the people that sit with me at least. So or I inspire to be um, evidential. Uh, oh, la, 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 la. Let's see. Reading this work now. Oh, you're reading Paul Selig's work. Love him. Great guy. Uh, uh, Angela, so when you're doing a soul reading and get information from your clairs, is that from, uh, um, is that from the person's guides? No. Um, Angela, I... I, I We've spoken before. Uh, eventually, eventually, there comes to a point where you'll know where you're getting your info from. It's just going to take a lot of practice. Like I know where my info is coming from. I know if I'm in, in into, like I said, it's a, I'm around the person and I'm psychically and intuitively. I know if I'm in, in into the soul because I'm feeling pulled here, or I know if I'm. I'm working with a discarnate, so a loved one on the um, spirit side. And I also know if I'm working with potentially a guide on the spirit side. Two different energies from that side um, there, an energy different of psychic and an energy different from soul. Um, so uh, it doesn't necessarily mean because your soul info that's coming up is coming going to come through you and through your clairs. So it doesn't mean they're coming from their guides. Um, it means that you're probably picking up on their soul, but you could get information, I'm saying, from the guides. Um, but again, it's something that down the road, as more as you continually work, develop, and practice, practice, read, 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 um, you eventually will get it. But I get it. I know where you're at because I didn't understand any of this shit um, years ago when I first started. I really didn't know a thing. I actually just started doing readings without any training because I had no clue what was happening and people were asking me. So I felt spirit was kind of setting this up. Um, and then I freaked out. And, um, after people really started, a lot of people started to call me and what sounds like again, Ooh, great. It should have been a good thing. No, I freaked out and I ran. And, and um, I remember the day I was talking to my wife and she, this is great. I said, what are you fucking crazy? No way. I don't know where this info is even coming from. Um, and so I ran to a spiritualist church. I ran to Janet and the Havoc's church because I lived only 15, 20 minutes from um, the journey within. And I signed myself up for some classes. And so, um, but eventually uh, over time, you'll start to feel where your information is coming from. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean because it's coming to your clairs, it's coming to your guides because your clairs will come through psychic too. I remember I asked that years ago if i was seeing something does that mean it's coming from a discarnate or does psychic information also come through energy is energy um your psychic information is going to come through your clairs too as well so don't think that because it's coming you're clear seeing clear hearing clear feeling it doesn't mean that's potentially coming from the discarnate there uh, i'm on the spirit side uh good natalie said i'm all covered you sure did help thanks joan joanne uh, uh summer garner do hi aj hi uh, um, how'd you know to call me AJ? That's so weird. Cause, uh, my sisters used to call me that when I was little. Um, do I hold the spirit circle? Um, Summer, I have, uh, I'm going, I'll, I'll do more. I'm going to do more, but I also have, um, people that have mentored with me. I, I, I try to, I would, they would get first dibs at it. Um, but I do feel, um, in the other group, the international mediumship development group that I've done with, uh, um, a couple of other, uh, uh mediums from Scotland, England, um, here, there's another uh, two other admins from here, but there's a Scottish and English uh, and I Ireland. Uh, um, we'll they'll be doing one uh, circle a month. You know, we'll be starting one circle a month for free for people there too. So if you want to check out that group, I don't know if you're in that group or not, but it's it's called International Mediumship Development um, there. What is that guy's name again? Gina, I think you're talking about Paul Selig. S E L I G. Paul Selig. Uh, um, glad I'm doing another video. Thank you, Melissa. I always say this. I, you know, it's funny because Natalie's the one that reached out to me about this and asked me to do this video because I guess she was getting questions um, about it. And uh, 
uh, I, I posted something like, I don't know, a week or two ago asking, you know, anyone have any things you want me to talk about, I'll go live, but no one actually posted. So I didn't think I, I thought everyone was good. But if you ever had something that you, comes up in your mediumship, send me a message and I'll come on live and talk about it. I have no problem when I can get time to come in and do it. Um, doing soul mediumship class with Lily and Mark, some evidential. Awesome, Sarah. Um, great. Um, all mediumship is soul mediumship. So I don't know what that really means, but yes, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, um, Taryn, so glad you're talking about this spirit could move us in another direction, totally move us in another direction. doesn't mean that we all have to be evidential mediums. Uh, um, there's, uh, there's a whole list of things, um, to help to be in service, uh, with people there, um, too, as well. Some people might just become intuitive coaches and that's fucking awesome. Really? Uh, um, Charlotte, I want both psychic and mediumship, both worlds. Can you give me some exercises to strengthen my Claire? Or do we work with what we have for our own Claire's? Or can we develop them all of if them? You should develop all of your Claire's. Um, most people think, I'm just clairvoyant. Or I'll say, what's your predominant sense? And they'll say, clairvoyant. Um, a lot of people, though, uh, it's funny because a lot of people now say to me, clairsentient. So it's kind of interesting. Um, that's my predominant. My predominant is clairsentient. My pre and then my second is clairaudience. Um, clairvoyance probably takes a backseat. And just because again, in when I'm doing a dem in front of a hundred people, um, th there's a million and one ways to interpret a picture literally. And I don't want to get stuck waiting to try to figure out that interpretation of that picture. So I, I go to, I, have, I guess I've strengthened my other clairs there in some way. Um, but clairvoyance still happens. I'm not saying it doesn't, but I'm not, I, I won't bank on that. Um, but you should, you're everything. You're not one thing. You're multifaceted. You are all Claire's. It's just somewhere along the line. You have taught yourself. You've been more of a visual person. You've been more of an audience person where you've heard, you've been more uh, of a feeler or you're empathic there in some way. Uh, um, but yeah, I would say Charlotte is, um, if you don't have her book, I would go get it. Janet Nohavik's book, um, where two worlds meet. Um, cause she has a, she goes through all the Claire's and she gives you exercises for each one in there, you know, but there's so many go on to Google. You can Google it too. Clairvoyant exercises, clairaudient exercises, stuff like that. Uh, um, that's good. Always been more drawn to psychic readings. Taryn, there is such a need for collecting good psychics. Let me tell you, uh, uh because there's a lot of poo poo ones, um, or some that say they are, but they're not really good, but they're, you can find a medium way easier now than a psychic. So I find that very interesting. Uh, many people have experienced spirit speaking through me. I finally, yeah, some people will become trance mediums. Some people will work trance. Some people may become on the physical, physical mediumship. You're talking about a whole nother world though. You know, you're talking about sitting for years to develop, uh, uh the, 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 the physical, uh, phenomena to take place. Um, there, but so many people experience speaking, speaking through me. I finally come to understand that this does happen. It's not just me with waves of epiphanies. So now what do you call that? And what would be the direction that spirit would like me to take this in? This is Lynn. Lynn, um, again, uh, spirits, I think I know what you're saying, but in a reading, you know, if I'm doing a mediumship reading, um, a lot of times people will say, that's exactly what my dad would say. Or I would say, uh, the, 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 the phrase that would come out of my mouth would be the exact words that he would have said. So spirit is speaking through me, um, at the same thing. So, um, there could be, again, there's still multiple ways you can go. It still could be mediumship. It could be trans. It could be channeling, um, trans channeling, uh, trans healer. There's just so many ways. So just keep developing, uh, um, what's happening. Keep asking spirit to guide you, you know, uh, um, for me, my life, my path is always being about surrendering and trusting spirit. You know, like I said in the beginning, like I thought I wanted to be a coach and God said, no, you know, uh, um, uh, God didn't literally come out and say, no, uh, uh, things started to happen and money started to dry up. And it was like, you're not going that way. I already told you, this is what you, you know, I already had enough signs, symbols, teachers came out of nowhere. Uh, uh, people literally came out and said, I want to develop you. I said, how much? And they said free. And I was like, what? You know, I was a hardcore skeptic. I was fucking skeptical. Um, of all this. I, I, if you haven't heard me say this, if no one heard me say it, I know I say it probably every time. I remember seeing John Edwards on TV about 17 years ago. I'm crossing over and I said, these fucking people are paid actors. And I switched the channel. That's how skeptical I was. And so, but something changed me um, over the years. And then I got sober and shit started happening to me. Um, and people came out of nowhere. And now I look back and my first potential teacher um, said she would, she, she would develop me for free because at that moment, for me, I was so skeptical that I thought that she just wanted my money. And I look back now and I know spirit 
they did it perfect. And that's why I always think spirit is perfect. Uh, um, because if she would have said a hundred dollars, I would have said this fucking lady wants my money. And I would have just kept going, you know, but because she said for free, I was like, Oh, I got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? So, uh, um, that's just the way how it started to happen for me. So um, just keep going. Deborah, I work fast, and a lot of people recognize that the soul wanted me to move quickly to the message. The soul's feelings, then when they want to, the soul's feelings, then what they want to say. Yeah, it's interesting, Deborah, because a lot of people, like I said earlier, um, a lot of people are resistant to know themselves because if they weren't, there'd be a lot more people meditating. There would be a lot more people working on themselves. So there would be a lot more people actually wanting to investigate uh, uh, um, where things happen, where that comes from within, instead of blaming others. Instead of, uh, um, you know, I, I feel like in some way we, we live in a victim society um, there where it's easy to put blame on others. Or I love it. I love this. And this is like a taboo subject here. Um, but when people put blame on the dark or the attachment made me do it, you know, or this thing attached to me. And that's why I was, I gave you that attitude. No, it's just your fucking self. Uh, um, and it's your shadow side that's doing it. Uh, um, but a lot of people don't like to look at themselves. So they put something else out there to try to, uh, uh, um, to, to use it as an excuse or uh, put blame somewhere else. And so I think that uh, um, what you're saying is, they recognize the soul and want to move quickly to the message. You know what I mean? Or the soul's feelings that when they want to say, Oh, I see you're saying in, um, you're saying also in mediumship wise, um, there. Yeah. They always, everyone wants the message. Oh, it, that's always going to be a thing. You know, they always want the message, but we still have to give evidence. You know what I mean? If, and, and then, and if you've given enough evidence and your sitter just know, yeah, you're connected. I get it. All right, let's move on. Uh, um, you got to surrender your mind more. You got to surrender your mind more to the spirit world, to what, is really wanted to be said because there is a message there um, from the spirit side, from the loved ones um, there too as well. Fill up your memory bank of info. Yeah, that's basically what you're actually doing. Uh, um, yeah, put yourself in a box, do it all. Uh, I never turned 45 minutes into this. I never heard you speak before. I love your stuff. Find it for entertainment. Thanks again, Lynn. It's like what one is. I start with cards, psychic and medium kicked in. Now I'm learning to work without my cards. Awesome. Uh, um circle put me in coach yeah i'll, I'll do that uh, um time to do a workbook oh that's so funny deborah you're psychic that's funny because um i've been thinking about doing that um so it's interesting a workbook but um wow i would love that and i love the circle idea first thing i did was read tarot tea leaf reading psychometry then my mediums abilities came in yep that's how most people start, believe it or not. You know, they don't just jump into mediumship. Uh, um, you learn the world of energy. That's probably, you know, my first teacher, the lady that came to develop me and said she was going to develop me for nothing, she never fucking taught me anything about doing a reading, which I was like, wait, what? You know, what's happening here? You know, like, let's get to the good stuff. When are the dead going to show up, you know? Uh, um, she taught me, I sat there, I would go to her house, and for like an hour, I would sit there and hold crystals. Like, what the fuck is this? You know? And uh, she would have me hold different crystals to see if I could feel the different energies, the subtlety of the energy of the different amethyst or quartz or whatever, you know. And that's how I learned to start feeling energy, you know. Um, some people then um, – I remember a woman told me to find – you know, the, the first woman that actually – did a reading on me um, and, and said that, you know, she called me back a week later and said, this is what you, you know, I, I need to talk to you. She told me then I should learn Reiki, which I didn't right away, but I can understand now why, because with Reiki, you're feeling energy. You're learning how to deal with energy. So if you want to learn how to do feel energy more, get deeper into the energy, um, cause you, you're just starting out. Absolutely. Go and learn Reiki, you know, look at, you know, take a Reiki one, take a Reiki two, find a Reiki master, um, learn how to feel energy in that way because you will feel the difference and you may start to pick up on people, um, areas of their body. You may start to feel a message, you may, like an overall overwhelming sense. I'm just supposed to tell you blah, blah, blah. Maybe you hear a name, you know what I mean? That, that technically the name's coming from the spirit side um, there. Uh, first thing I did was read tarot. I did that one. How do I connect? So I can understand what past loved ones want me to know because they keep coming to me in my dreams. That's Edna. I think Edna. Uh, um, you learn. You got to develop. It's a develop. You have to develop. It's not 
just one learning. It's a whole process and developing is a process, you know? Um, and once you learn to develop, uh, um, you may get what you want. Uh, um, I will be honest with you. And again, this is another taboo belief thing. Um, I don't, you know, I have relatives on the other side. Uh, I have close friends on the other side and they don't come to me and give me some fucking grand message. Uh, um, if anything, they'll come to me in a dream and probably try to give me a message. But as a medium, I don't sit here and get sit here and write shit down and try to automatic write them because uh, um, my emotional nature gets in the way of my connection to them. And that's going to be the number one thing. You know what I mean? When we try to connect to our own family, like a medium can't, a psychic can't read for themselves. You know what I mean? But tarot cards, we could throw down tarot cards and we can get something potentially of, like I'll pick three tarot cards for the day, but I still can't read those tarot cards as some, another reader can do for me. You know, there's still, there's like that emotional block. Um, there's my filters, um, kind of in the way. So I would dream journal though. If you feel like they're coming to you and giving you stuff in dreams, I would dream journal it and, and go back and look at it and see, see what the message is, but also develop. Um, I mean, on the soul circle. Yes, absolutely. The more tools we have, the more people we can help a hundred percent. There's a real need for, for anything, mediums, psychics, healers, there's a, there's a need for everything out there um, to be in service, you know, to be in service for spirit, to be in service of the light, whatever you want to call it um, there too. Have you personally done a past life regression? Dolores, no, I haven't actually. Well, I did it with Brian Weiss, uh, Dr. Brian Weiss. At, um, uh, he was at the Javits Center in, in New York, and so it was a group one. So I did it there. Um, I do remember going back to my mom's womb. It was quite interesting actually, but I didn't go, but it was this life in the womb. I didn't go I, for some reason. I didn't let myself go deeper. My wife's done it. Um, very interesting. My wife's done it with a regressionist, and we've been married or we've been together in many lives, which is really interesting because when me and my wife first met, immediately she said, "I know you," and I said, "You don't know me. I don't know. You don't know me." And she's like, "Maybe you know." We thought maybe they're like Facebook friends or some shit, but no. She she recognized, I guess, that soul connection uh, um, immediately, and then you know, years later, she went to a regressionist. And all that stuff, you know, she went through a couple of lives and we were, we were together in many. Um, I went through the QEHT and it really helped me with my ability, psychic mediumship. Awesome. Uh, um, there. Uh, many people have experienced spirit speaking to. Why do I feel like, did I just go back? Oh, I, I could I wear that one already. Do you say the soul is sorry if they don't say it to you? I tell, I try to tell the sitter that sometimes the soul is learning to understand what they did was wrong or hurtful. They're growing. Once the once they pass, doesn't mean they are automatically pure. Um, I wouldn't say it if I, they don't give it to me. So again, um, usually they're not literally audiently telling me that. It's a feeling that they're giving me uh, um, around it. You know, it's a feeling that they're giving me of being sorry and wanting to say sorry. You know, I don't literally hear Claire audiently tell them I'm sorry. You know, it's a feeling of regret. It's a feeling of shame. It's a feeling of remorse um, that they're literally overlapping or impressing on me through my clairsentience at that point. And then this way I could pass along to them um, what they're giving me. So, yeah. So I wouldn't say it if they don't give me that. I wouldn't just say your dad, you know, blah, 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 wants to say sorry if I wasn't really feeling that um, there for them because I would be doing a disservice um, there on the spirit side um, of life there too as well. Um, just went the journey within this past week. Yeah, great place. Uh, um, haha, your wife and my husband play the same roles. Yep, totally. Uh, I get it. I get what you're saying there, Sarah. Um, didn't see posts. Hi, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Coop. I know, Coop, you got a soul reading, I think, from Natalie, actually. I think you were set up. Uh, I set you up there um, with that. Um, guys, also, too, uh, this is going to start a thing here. Uh, you know what? I'll go into the group and, and, and post something because I have um, – 11 new uh, mentoring students I'm taking on. Uh, we start a first class tomorrow for the next six months or five months, five months intensive, six months really though. Uh, um, and we're going to be doing soul readings. So I'll make a post in the group in this group or the international mediumship development group about looking for sitters for soul readings because my, these students will need to practice because they're going to, we're doing, we're covering all aspects, not just mediumship, soul, psychic. And so I'll make a post there and you'll see it to sign up if, you know, if they're drawn to work with you. So if you want to get a soul reading or experience a soul reading or allow them to practice on you for a soul reading, um, that'd be pretty cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I'm just skipping through here. I started as a channel guide 20 plus years ago. Awesome. Uh, I'm Sarah. Um, Ricky's gray. I'm a Ricky master. Yes. 
there you go. Jane, you're a Reiki master, so you probably understand all that energy. Um, awesome. I hear spirit and see spirit in human form. Awesome, Gwen. Uh, Reiki was my foundation. Yeah, the, you know, I think Reiki, a lot of people start with Reiki, I, th I feel like, for some reason. And then, you know, they're kind of taken or because they're learning that, that type of energy work, then they start to pick up things within. Because when you're doing Reiki, you're, you're technically in the person's aura. You know what I mean? Your hands are there. You're trying to bring information to their or you're uh, not information. You're bringing healing. You're bringing energy, universal energy, um, into the sitter, and so you're you're you are way up in their shit. You know what I mean? You're way up in their energetic presence, and so you potentially could start picking up on information. So I think Reiki is like a catalyst um, for people to start moving forward um, there in that way. So uh, it would make, totally make sense um, to it. What does it mean if you don't dream, but rarely? Uh, pricey. Um, I don't dream a lot too, but when I do dream, it's very vivid and I know it's spirit. I know it's my guides trying to give me a message. I mean, I had are my vivid dreams about friends in the spirit world. I had a crazy experience, but that's a whole other story. Uh, um, at a time that I was in England that my friend literally, a, a deceased friend woke me up because I was about to be late uh, um, because of the time difference from England to here um, in my mentorship over there. Uh, but it was really weird. That's a whole other story. But uh, um, if I have, like I don't dream that much, but then there, there, there'll be a dream that's so vivid, so real, and I'll wake up and I know my God's trying to give me information that I'm not getting. That's the, the whole point. Like I said to someone earlier, they're talking about how can I get this information from my loved ones on the other side? Like it still has to come through dream state for me. You know what I mean? Or, uh, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm thick headed or my guys probably laugh and think, Oh, I know they must think I'm fucking stubborn. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, um, but, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it comes through in my dreams. So, uh, if you're dreaming, like you rarely dream, but you do dream and you remember it, it's probably a message and try to journal it and, and maybe ask, you know, to get it interpreted or try to figure out the interpretation through yourself. Because if you ask them to help figure out the information, I think they will. Um, I have visitations in my dream, very vivid colors. It's very emotional. Uh, Michael, um, I have visitations in my dreams. I, is that a two thing, Mike? Because I don't know. Like you have visitations in your dreams, maybe from past loved ones. Then you have very – or is there very vivid colors in different um, dreams because um, it's very emotional. Because I want to say is – because someone just brought this up the other day. Uh, um, they say they see colors when they meditate. And I was saying, listen, guides can come through as colors. People think like guides are going to come through as this human presence or a form where they need to be in that way. Like we put this fucking crazy expectation on it. No. Uh, um, again, if you read books uh, – Ted Andrews has a great book about spirit guides. Um, guides will come through as colors. Guides will come through as animals. Guides will come through as insects. Guides will come through as symbols, not even just nothing, but just a symbol of not of an animal or something, maybe like of a fucking thumbtack. You know what I mean? Like they're going to use what they can um, to, to, to make themselves known. So you may see that or experience that in a dream, or you may see that and experience that in meditation or sitting in the power, um, something of that way. So guides can come through as color though. So it's really interesting to me. Um, so if you're seeing vivid colors and it's just that, and it's not like your deceased loved ones, your guides may be um, working on you um, and, and coming through to you in your dream state like that. Hi, Kevin. Um, I got a visitation of dreams from all dead relatives and other people with messages that come true. Awesome. Yeah, so you're picking up on the collective. You know, usually uh, my, my wife is a prophetic dreamer. It's fucking crazy, actually. Um, in, a lot of my path has been through dreams that she's had. I think she even has dreamed my guide comes through her dreams. It's fucking weird. Trust me. Um, not so much as much anymore, but in the earlier years of my development, um, my wife would have these crazy prophetic dreams. How I even found Lisa Williams um, and how she picked me to help to study with her um, it actually came through a dream from my wife, which was fucking weird. Um, and then all of a sudden I showed uh, like one night on the thing, I was like, Oh, this woman's doing a class and I was thinking about applying and I showed her and she was like, Oh my God, that's her. That's the woman. That's the dream I had, you know? And I was like, what? And everything played out exactly how my wife dreamed about it. It's fucking crazy. Um, so yeah, you can pick up on the collective again. It, it goes to tell me, um, to some degree about free will, because I, again, I don't have an ultimate truth. It's a question. Um, 
I haven't done my podcast in a while, but I'm going to be doing it coming back in this fall, Evolving Soul with Anthony. Um, some of you guys may listen to Pat Longo on the station, MC. Um, there's a life coach on there too, but I'll be doing more. But that's like a question that I would literally ask every person I've ever interviewed. Uh, some of the bigger names, Colette, Paul Selig. Uh, I interviewed John Edward. Um, John Edward, though, was a, it was actually a, um, a written thing in the spiritual magazine I have. I was actually going to post it the other day. I'll go back and find the, the interview I did with John because it was pretty good for developing mediums. Uh, um, but uh, it's a question I always have. Do we create a reality or is there some sort of spiritual destiny? So if someone that could be a prophetic dreamer and they pick up on so much of the future, how the fuck do we create our reality? weird uh, uh, um so for me my experience just my experience i've surrendered and literally by surrendering everything has uh, um, unfolded exactly how it's supposed to be there's also another great book uh, on the surrender experiment um, by michael singer um he wrote the untethered soul some people know that book uh, um but uh he was on oprah for the untethered soul but the surrender experiment my journey into life's perfection is just is is mind-blowing i literally have listened to that book a couple times because it's mind-blowing with this guy guy wanted to be you know basically just a meditating dirty hippie back in the 70s and just surrendered his life and didn't let his mind get in the way um and whatever his mind came up and resisted he basically did and here he is years you know 40 years he lived his life like this and he's selling a company for 300 million dollars all by the perfection of what unfolded in his life. Crazy shit. Go and read the book. It's kind of nuts to me. Um, yeah, massage too. Sarah, Sarah's talking about true Reiki and massage. Um, I did a, uh, an interview. I, I can post this one too with Colette, ba- Colette Baron Reed. If you guys don't know who Colette is, awesome. She's probably one of the best psychic intuitives I've ever seen read. But she's also an amazing medium. She's big in Canada. She had her own TV show there in Canada, so the Canadians know her. Um, I did a, uh, an interview with her many, many years ago in print on a magazine, and um, she talked about uh, that. You know, it, that's how Colette started. Colette didn't want to be a medium. She actually wanted to be a recording artist. And literally, Colette. What happened with Colette was uh, while she was building, you know, to become a, a recording artist, she started doing. She figured that she would do. Um, essential oil massages. Uh, so I'm sorry, aromatherapy massage. And so by doing that, she was trained in that. And, um, uh, it's something that she doesn't write in the interview by doing that. She literally, um, you know, she had abuse when she was younger. She talks about it in the interview. Um, and so she would, was getting all these women that were abused that she was massaging and she would be guided to that point of their body and she would feel a darkness there and she would bring it up and then more information was come through kind of like what we were talking about earlier about how, and she was starting to help people to heal in some way. And so people actually stopped coming and booking massages with her and just wanted her to talk to them for a reading. And that's how, that's how she started. So interesting. Yeah. Massage, same thing. You're all up in someone's energy there. Uh, Um, Hi, Fiona. My mom passed away yesterday. I had a nurse that was, I swear to God, that was an angel who allowed me to experience a difficult passing. I look forward to the next couple of weeks to see what I will. You got cut off there for some reason, Fiona. I'm so sorry for your mom's loss. Oh, we'll be shown. I'm sure you'll be shown signs and stuff like that. Um, I'm so sorry for your loss um, there, there as well. My daughter's starting to get dreams and messages from my mother on the other side. We are dreamers. Awesome. Just checking and watching this live or is it recording? It's live right now, Rosemary. It's live. Um, live and watch a recording. Another great book. Oh, this book is getting this is getting long. Yeah, there's a lot of books out there. Trust me, I could show you my, my bookshelf. Uh, my first year I actually couldn't afford TV because I was just getting sober <clears throat> and my life was pretty much shit. And I literally couldn't afford cable anymore. Um so I don't know. I guess I look back now probably in the divine plan because literally I, um, I read, I read con. That's all I did. I, I read, I, I didn't have TV. So I, I literally sat and read and people would send me books. People all of a sudden sent me infinite quest from John Edward, many lives, many masters by Dr. Brian White. Like literally books would show up and I'm like, all right, I guess it's my next book. All right. I get it. You know? And, and I would read it. And so, um, there, there's just so much information out there. And the more that you, you do, the more that you read, the more that you study, um, you become more of a, it's like you become an encyclopedia. I remember Tony Stockwell, uh, um, before mentoring with him, 
Um, but I would, I would ask him all the time. I think he'd probably fucking kill me at, at some point. Like, why do you keep asking the same question? You know, I would say, but, but how do we get more references? You know, I said, basically, you know, and he would say, you, you know, you study, make lists, you know? And I would say, so basically become a walking encyclopedia. And he looked at me and said, yes, that's it. Become a walking encyclopedia for the spirit world. Um, so the more um, stuff that you do, the more you become conscious, the more that you stay um, in the conscious moment, if you can. I'm not talking about like, yes, the power of now, like Eckhart Tolle, but the more you can become conscious and don't live on that tape, um, the more references that are, are building within you. So um, I really want to go and, and, and um, play with my kids because they're getting ready to go to bed in a half hour and daddy's home tonight because I'm usually out working uh, um, and doing groups and whatever else on, on evening time. So um, I hope this helps guys. I, I actually wasn't thinking I was going to come on here and, and talk for an hour and 23 minutes. So I apologize for being a little lengthy and long. Um, I just wanted to explain the difference between a soul reading and psychic reading. Um, if you just caught this now, go back to the beginning and listen to that. Cause that's what we talked about it the whole time. It's a deeper level. Um, there. Uh, one other thing, uh, if you are in the New Jersey, New York, or Connecticut area, or anywhere in Pennsylvania too, um, I have a class coming up in October, a two-day class Saturday and Sunday with Cindy Kaza. Um, if you don't know who Cindy Kaza is, look her up. She's phenomenal. Uh, internationally touring medium. <clears throat> um, we're doing a class here in New Jersey together. So it's a Saturday and Sunday. It's uh, mediumship essentials. So working on your mediumship, different techniques, but also uh, um, it's a platform too as well. So we'll be learning how to do bigger groups, uh, um, platform type stuff uh, for two days. So that's, uh, I don't know, it's on my website, I believe. Uh, um, or you could message me for it. And I also have a beginner's class coming up um, September 18th. I'm start, I teamed up with Carissa, uh, another brilliant medium from uh, um, New Hampshire. And uh, we're doing a nine-week beginner's class. Um, and the sign-up's almost done with that. So um, if you're interested in that, DM me, or I think you can email us. It's developingmediumship at gmail.com, I think it is. Um, let me just totally look here uh, um, for you. And it's, yes, developingmediumship at gmail.com. You can email us there, or you could uh, um, DM me here if you're interested. But I think there's only a couple more days to sign up because it starts. It's a nine-week online course um, where you'll be dealing with me and her. We'll also be talking about the soul stuff too as well. She also is very good with trends. So trans mediumship, um, so she's going to be focusing on that for a week or two. Um, so it's just a whole solid beginner's course there too as well. So thank you guys so much. Uh, questions, concerns, drop them in Drop them in the thing. I always say if you don't know me, reach out to me. Friend request me here on Facebook. Uh, um, I'm always, I always try to be available to someone. If you DM me and it takes me like a day or two to get back to you, I'm sorry. Just bear with me um, because sometimes it, it just does. Um, I just get um, – busy you know busy with with with, um, with readings and, and stuff like that so um, and to my Canadian people that are hopefully are watching um, I'm excited to be in Canada um, in two weeks actually I'll be in I'm gonna say this right Bob Cajun Bob Cajun Ontario uh, uh, um, uh, in two weeks actually Deming and doing a workshop uh, um, up there too as well so everyone have a good night and um, if you need me reach out talk to you bye bye